good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Darwin Schimba. I'm a sixth year medical student at the Cooper Belt University School of Medicine, and I'm equally the Director of Operations uh, at the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons. So today we are very happy to start another uh, session of or rather another, another uh, a series of presentations that we're going to have uh, for the next uh, few weeks, uh, which is the uh, grandmanship uh, course. Uh, so uh, as we proceed through the journey of uh, uh, towards neurosurgery and, and, uh, and research, uh, we have seen that uh, in most cases, uh, there's need of uh, most of us applying for these grants uh, because the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons is made up of um, vibrant young, uh, uh, young African uh, Africans who want to explore different areas in neurosurgery and research. And uh, despite that, mostly they're exposed to, uh, they're exposed to uh, uh, very low, uh, 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 very low uh, resources. So because of that, there's always need to apply for grants and, and, and all that. So we want to look at uh, this uh, course uh, so that we can um, uh, have that experience of uh, a knowledge of how to apply for uh, different grants. So today we're going to have the first uh, presentation, uh, which is uh, going to be done by Emmanuel Mukambo. I uh, was going to introduce himself later on. Uh, so, but before we go into the presentation, I'm going to allow, uh, I'm going to call upon uh, people to introduce themselves and I'm going to be calling according to how uh, the names are appearing on my screen. So I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Chibwe Kemo. Please, you can introduce yourself. You can unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please. Hi, thank you, Zulu. Uh, my name is Chibwe Kemo, a medical doctor from Nigeria and research fellow with AFAN. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chibwe Kemo. Then uh, we have Dr. Imora, Dr. Azid. I hope I pronounced your oh, name correctly. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, please, that's right. Yeah. Um, please, my name is uh, Imori Azid, a fourth year medical student from Ghana, and also the Medical Students Association Vice President in my school at the University of Ghana. And this today is actually my first day of uh, joining this uh, presentation session, and I hope to achieve more and more things from this presentation. Yeah. Thank you, and thanks to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we are very glad to have you and hope to see you uh, next time again. And uh, please feel free right. to always engage in uh, all the programs. Okay. All right, okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Next, we have Matimba Modi. Please introduce yourself. Um, thank you so much. My name's uh, Matimba Modi Chilala. I'm a fourth year medical student at the Copa Belt University in Zambia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Molly. Uh, next, we have Musakanya Shituluka. Good evening, everyone. My name is Musakanya Shituluka, a year medical student from Zambia, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much, Musakanya. Then we have um, uh, Bejo. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm a Takutin Domo Bejo, City Medical Student at the University of Boya, Cameroon, Research Fellow at the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons. Happy to be here with you guys. Thank you so much uh, for being here with us. We can have um, Muyunda Manze to introduce himself. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, depending on the time you are listening to me. Muyunda Manze, third year medical student at the Copper Belt University School of Medicine in Zambia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mwenda um, Manze, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Uh, then we have Olalua Ezekiel. Please introduce yourself. Um, greetings, everyone. I'm Olalua Ezekiel. Dada. I'm a second year medical student from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ezekiel. Then um, we have Post Tambo. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning from wherever you are getting me from. Uh, my name is um, Tambo Poster, 60th year medical student from the Kawa Birch University School of Medicine, Zambia. Happy to be here. Okay, uh, next we have Rachel 
Uh, please introduce. Hey, my name is Rachel Pokota, a third year medical student at Levi Manawasa. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rachel. Right. So we are going to go straight into the presentation. So I'll ask the presenter to, um, you can share your screen, you can introduce yourself and uh, begin the presentation. All right, uh, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Manu Mkambu. I'm a fourth year medical student at the Copper Belt University. Uh, Michael Chilif is at the School of Medicine uh, in Zambia. I'm also the Zambian ambassador of uh, the Neuroscience and the Neurosurgery Interest Group. So um, our topic of discussion today will be uh, general information about applying for grants, which uh, forms uh, which forms a part of uh, a four part series of um, the grantsmanship course. Thank you. So uh, this will form the rather this will constitute the uh, general layout of uh, the content of my presentation today. So we'll go through the introduction. We'll discuss um, the I mean we'll highlight the examples of uh, granting agencies. Uh, steps in grant application from planning to submission and eventually um, the um, awarding of our grants. And then we'll discuss um, possible determinants of our grant funding success as well as possible determinants of our grant funding failure and we'll close with our conclusions. So um, before we can go into uh, the steps and everything else, uh, I'd like to highlight uh, a few important uh, definitions with regards to uh, the, um, with regards to my topic of uh, presentation. So um, grantsmanship is uh, just the art of acquiring peer-reviewed research funding uh, through grant writing, or we can say it is a skill or practice of uh, obtaining grants, especially for research. So uh, in, in the light of this, uh, when you talk about uh, an art, it's, uh, um, it's a skill that can be owned uh, with, uh, with, uh, within a reasonable period of time with uh, adequate practice as well as uh, good mentorship. So um, a grant or grants are basically just uh, funds that are given by an entity uh, to an individual or any other entity, especially for the purpose of uh, public benefit. So public benefit in this case would be, um, uh, for example, research, or it, can be due, uh, it can be for the purpose of um, a public health uh, awareness uh, activity that uh, the applicant can apply, I mean, apply for a, a grant for. And then uh, we also have um, grant writing. So grant writing is the actual process or the actual activity of applying for uh, a grant. So this is the process of completing an application, yeah, an application process for a grant that is provided by an institution, which uh, we can say in this case is a funding institution, a funding agency. So um, um, despite the fact that uh, grantsmanship is uh, an important component of uh, applying for um, applying for a grant, especially um, Yes, a grant with respect to a, uh, a field in science, it is not a substitution for good science. So uh, in, a situation, in a situation where you have uh, an individual with uh, good grantsmanship skills, but with a uh, mediocre science, the outcome is most likely not a fundable uh, grant proposal. On the other hand, however, um, if we have good science and uh, with poor grantsmanship skills, there's a great likelihood that uh, even with uh, sufficient science and good science, uh, the, uh, the, um, the proposed project will not be funded. Yeah, so um, this is just an outline of um, uh, examples of uh, funding agencies or agencies that uh, has, uh, give out uh, grants for various purposes, specifically um, under, uh, yeah, the under sciences, biomedical sciences. So we have uh, the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, which is uh, one of the largest uh, uh, funding agencies in the world. We also have the CERM, which is the um, California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. We have the European Association of Neurosurgical Societies, White Hall Foundation, Green Wall Foundation. So these are just uh, some of the, uh, these are examples of some of the uh, many funding agencies at which um, interested applicants can apply to. So um, um, we'll also discuss uh, the steps that are involved in uh, the process of applying for a grant. So they are, um, like I said initially, uh, grantsmanship is, um, is, a, is a practice, it's an art or a skill that um, involves uh, following particular principles and following particular steps in order for uh, an individual to increase their likelihood of uh, uh, obtaining a, um, yeah, the grant for which they're applying. So um, the following will be the steps that we'll be discussing. So uh, the, the first step is uh, getting started with uh, the, the application procedure. Um, so uh, as, as, as a rule, when um, an individual or an applicant, an interested applicant or an, yeah, an interested individual 
or interested institution or group of individuals uh, intend to apply for uh, a grant, it is important that they keep in mind that they do not write the application for themselves or, the, or for their own needs unless they are going to fund it themselves. So what this means is that um, most of the times in the or rather one, one pitfall, that is a uh, very cardinal um, for any interested applicants who would like to apply for a grant for, is um, the issue of uh, looking at uh, the uh, application process from their perspective. So in most cases, there are needs as well as missions and visions that uh, the funding agency normally has, is, I mean, normally has, uh, for which it is uh, offering the grant. As a result, uh, an individual who's applying for a grant is supposed to look into the visions, the objectives, as well as the missions um, that the funding agency has. So uh, because of this, it is important that the applicant is adequately informed as well as gets uh, help from other collaborators or from mentors and uh, does not work in isolation. So it is also important that uh, the applicants uh, get in touch uh, with uh, other funding, with uh, the funding agency staff. And then, um, yeah, because the funding agency staff are able and uh, in the position, in the better position to provide uh, the applicant with uh, information that is appropriate. So when you, when you talk about um, appropriateness of information, like I said initially, uh, agencies, uh, funding agencies normally have their uh, missions, visions and uh, objectives as well as goals. So when uh, a grant is being offered or when a grant is being, uh, yeah, when a grant is being offered, uh, the um, funding agency has, has in their mind uh, objectives that they want to accomplish through um, the, um, yeah, through the grant that has been offered. And as a result, it is very important for the applicant to seek information, uh, prior information before they even uh, start uh, the application process from the funding agency staff with regards to the appropriateness of uh, their uh, proposed project or to find out the means in which they can modify uh, their proposed project so that it suits the, uh, the missions as well as the visions, uh, goals and objectives of the funding agency. So um, while we're still on this, it is also important um, that the applicant uh, knows their audience. So uh, within uh, the, um, the process of uh, grant application, uh, as we'll see during the course of uh, this presentation, the, um, uh, after submission, the, um, the grant, I mean the application, goes through a, a series of steps, and one of them is um, uh, the review step. So the review uh, comprises of um, uh, different individuals, different uh, groups of individuals, who are responsible for uh, checking the feasibility or evaluating the, uh, the feasibility, evaluating the, um, the reasonability, as well as uh, uh, checking for other standards, evaluating for other standards for, uh, um, for conferring the grant or awarding the grant to the applicants. So um, because of this, uh, it is important that the applicant knows that uh, the individuals that will be reviewing the application may be experts in their field or in their area or in the, method in the methodologies that you'll be proposing. However, those two be individuals, there's a great likelihood that in the review board, there are individuals who are like uh, from mixed, and, uh, mixed scientific backgrounds who may not uh, adequately understand the, the um, uh, uh, detailed information with regards to their proposal. So it's uh, very important that uh, the applicant uh, writes at least a lay summary or explains uh, in, yeah, explains in a manner that the, um, uh, the mixed audience of, uh, the, uh, of the review board are able to understand uh, what it is that the individual is um, proposing or the applicant is proposing. And then in addition to this, uh, the use of abbreviations, acronyms and jargons is uh, discouraged because it may mask the um, um, important information that the applicant may want to, uh, may want to relay to the review board. So um, this just shows an outline of um, the, um, yeah, the, the series of steps that follow once an individual uh, submits their application. So um, if we can see from on the far left, we have uh, application submitted. So this is following, um, uh, yeah, so this follows after um, uh, the individual has gone through the process of planning, the individual has gone through the, uh, the process of inquiring and finding out uh, what it is that the funding agency would uh, think is appropriate as well as um, uh, finding out from mentors and other collaborators that would be that would provide necessary information that would help, um, rather that would increase the likelihood of a possible outcome for a uh, grant application. So here we have um, an application that is submitted, uh, eligibility check, and the next part peer review, and these other um, yeah these other steps. So uh, while we're still on this uh, on the first part of um, 
uh, grant application or learning, rather getting um, first and information. There's also an aspect of learning the basics. So um, it is important that the applicant knows, um, understands how the research, how the research project is aligned with the funding agency's research portfolio. So um, under this, uh, like I said initially, it is important that the um, uh, that the, the that the applicant understands the motives and the visions that the uh, funding agency has that um, that will uh, that uh, that form the criteria by which uh, the review uh, boards as well as other um, members of uh, staff of the funding agency are looking out for that will uh, increase the likelihood of uh, a positive outcome. Like I said initially, so uh, it is also important that the um, um, that the applicant explores alternative programs. Uh, by the funding agency. So what I mean by this, uh, allow me to just go to the next slide so that um, I elucidate my point. So uh, when you look at this, so right on top, this is a flowchart. So right on top, we have uh, the same, and then under the same, we have uh, different sub-institutes, if I can say. So these are different um, uh, sub-institutes that are responsible for awarding, um, awarding um, grants. So each sub-institute um, has its own Despite the fact that it's a, a component or it's a part of uh, STEM altogether, it has its own visions, it has its own objectives and uh, goals that it would like to accomplish. Even when it uh, is when even when the specific subunit, let's say the CIRM Disease Team Research Awards, even when uh, the grant is being uh, given from this specific uh, sub institute, they have their goals, they have their specific goals, their visions, as well as the objectives that they would like to accomplish. And because of this, it is important that um, the applicants uh, explores alternative grant programs or uh, explores alternative uh, sub institutes uh, under the funding agency that would, uh, yeah, the, uh, the objectives of which would align with uh, the objectives of the individual applying for a, for the grant. So yeah, it is important that the um, the applicants plans their approach. They understand exactly. If uh, they are starting their project from scratch, or it's already a developed project that just needs funding, uh, also understanding the internal procedures of uh, the, the applicant's uh, organ yeah, organization, as well as to prepare to write a competitive application, because uh, most of these uh, funding funding uh, institutions or funding agencies have uh, um, applications coming in from different applicants, and it is uh, it is uh, since the um, uh, since the awarding of uh, the, the, um, the grants is based on merit, it is important that the uh, applicant considers the fact that uh, it is a competitive process. Yes, so um, the second part uh, under the steps of um, uh, grant application is actually applying for the uh, grant itself, the grant funding. So um, under this, uh, the applicant has a responsibility to ensure that all registrations are in place. So by this, we mean uh, all necessary attachments that are needed in case there are any document uh, documentations that are required, uh, the uh, I mean the, um, the the applicant has them in place, and then they also get uh, familiar with the requirements. So um, um, the funding agencies normally send out, for example, the NIH sends out uh, what are known as the FOS, so the funding opportunity announcement. So these are just uh, basically an announcements of um, opening of a, um, a particular a particular um, Grant. So under this, there will be uh, particular instructions, precise instructions with regards to what is required of individuals, uh, with regards to expiry dates or other due dates, as well as uh, things such as um, weight limitations or um, page limitations or page limits rather uh, that the applicant is supposed to pay attention to. So it is important that um, in preparing, the applicant gets familiar with uh, the requirements and instructions that um, have been established by the funding agency. It's also important that um, um, uh, yeah, it is also important that the applicant chooses which of the available uh, submission options uh, they will use. So, if uh, for example the um, the the institution that is giving out the grant is in the uh, country of the applicant's residence, they can decide to do the application process physically, or they can do it uh, online, uh, maybe by sending email or via their website. Or other modalities or platforms that the funding agency provides as a means of submission. And then after this, um, I can actually get into the process of uh, writing the application. So um, in writing uh, the application, the grant application, there are a number of elements that are important and should be noted by any individual that is uh, uh, interested in applying for a, 
uh, for a grant. So these are having a good idea, um, having good timing, having a good presentation, having good reviewers, as well as having good grantsmanship. So we will run um, a bit deeper into this um, as we proceed. So um, a good idea, what is a good idea? So um, a good idea in this case, or rather an idea in this case is uh, what the applicant is proposing that, sh that uh, should be funded by the funding agency. So in this case, it's the, uh, the, um, the applicant's project proposal. So um, in, um, in looking at uh, the, the idea that the, um, that the, that the applicant has, uh, its goodness is uh, determined by majorly three things. Firstly, it's significance. Secondly, it's you know, uh, whether it's innovative or not. And um, thirdly, whether it's understandable or not. So when we talk about significance, we're talking about uh, what problem the proposal is intending to solve. And if at all uh, this is actually a problem, uh, what, uh, what kind of information or what new information, what gap of information is the uh, idea or the project proposal uh, filling in? And then innovative, uh, we're talking about um, whether there are any major unsolved uh, problems that uh, the proposal, the project proposal is intending to um, solve or sort out. And then understandable. So when you talk about understandable, we're just referring to the aspect of um, uh, applicant ownership of their, of their idea. So when you talk about ownership, the, um, the applicants must have full knowledge of what exactly they are proposing for. They are supposed to adequately understand or have a clear vision of uh, what it is that the, uh, the project is about. So its aims, um, its, its possible results, its possible outcomes, as well as the impact. Since uh, initially, as I was defining the grant, we said uh, one of the things that we look out for is, uh, is that it should be of public benefit. So we are talking about uh, an aspect of uh, the applicant understanding what the long, long term or short term impact and uh, relevance of the project that is being proposed uh, will have. And then um, it's also important that the applicant has in mind good timing. So good timing in this case refers to um, the fact that the patient, sorry, not the patient, the applicant rather, who uh, has to have enough time in their planning. So they are supposed to look at how much time it will take them to go through the application process from um, planning, from um, getting through the basics, uh, planning for the, uh, for the application, making the submission, as well as uh, waiting for the awarding of the grant, whether they, uh, the, the outcome will be positive or negative. Yes, um, so the third element under writing uh, an application is good presentation. And um, I would say a uh, good presentation among these, um, among these uh, elements of uh, writing an application stands out as one of the most crucial um, elements. So uh, making a, in making a presentation, uh, the applicant should have at the back of their minds the idea that they should make it easy for the reviewer to follow through their work. So it is the responsibility of the individual or the applicant who is making the application to make sure that the, uh, the, um, the information that they're trying to relay or rather the picture that they're trying to paint in the minds of the reviewers is actually what is painted. So they, they should make sure that uh, what they're trying to communicate is actually what is communicated to the reviewers. So yeah, like I said, it is uh, crucial to the presentation. I mean, the, uh, the presentation is uh, crucial and uh, quite determining with regards to what the likely um, outcome will be. And then uh, the reviewer must be able to pick answers easily in your application or in the applicant's application. So when you talk about answers, um, I remember talking about the FOS, which are the, um, the um, advertisements that are sent out or the notices, the announcements that are sent out of uh, the availability of these funds. So obviously there are a set of instructions that are laid down there and the requirements that are needed. And it will be the responsibility of the applicants to ensure that those things are answered. So that even, the review, even as the reviewers are going through the applicant's application, they're able to like pick up information with regards to the instructions and the requirements that we outlined in the FOS. Uh, so in addition to this, uh, it's also the responsibility of the applicants to ensure that there's a logical sequencing of work. So the work should uh, make sense. So uh, for example, the applicants cannot outline their work with uh, starting with uh, the possible or the, um, the, um, the intended results of uh, the project proposal without talking about what the proposal is about or without talking about the significance of the proposal. So logical sequencing is very important to help the, uh, the reviewer to follow through the work uh, properly. And then um, under the same uh, 
uh, aspect of logical sequencing, it's also important that um, in presenting their work, the applicant uses uh, section headings that will uh, direct the uh, reviewer to understand that uh, particular information will be found under a particular paragraph. Okay, so as an applicant, it is, uh, um, yeah, it is the applicant's responsibility to ensure that they do everything to help the reviewer to understand the idea, to understand why it is important, as well as to understand the feasibility and reasonability of uh, the proposal that the applicant that the, sorry, that the applicant is making. Okay, so it is important that the applicant follows the instructions that we outlined in the announcement to communicate clearly and to organize the work uh, properly. So um, under the aspect of uh, organization, so um, this is just like an outline of uh, the importance of uh, organizing the application. So when you talk about the what, most, most of the times, uh, rather sometimes you find that um, in, the, in the announcement, they will not precisely, uh, they may not precisely say, this is the aim, this is the significance or tell us the approaches that we use, but uh, they may be uh, statements such as rather words that may be used such as what, why, how, and what is expected, or rather why is it a good thing. So these just highlight when you say hi, when you say what, we're highlighting what are the aims of the project proposal. Uh, when you say why, we're trying to find out what, what the significance of uh, what the significance of the project proposal uh, will be. Like what will happen if we do not do the project proposal? What benefit is it going to bring in a particular field? And uh, when we talk about the approaches, we're trying to find out uh, uh, by what means uh, will the um, yeah, by what means will the applicant um attain the um, yes attain the the the, um, the, um, the project proposal that they are proposing and then we'll talk about um uh, the expected outcomes as well as the impact um yeah as well as the impact under the uh, organization of uh, the application so it's also important to understand that without an organization without a proper organization there's a great likelihood that the applicant will not receive the funding and in the same way uh poor organization will also lead to the, um, the applicants not receiving the, excuse me, the, the funding. And as a result, it is important that um, the applicant follows through the principles of good uh, grantsmanship, which, are, which means or rather implies following through uh, principles and steps that uh, increase the likelihood of an individual to be granted a, a grant. And then there's also uh, good reviewers uh, good reviewers, in this case, may, may sort of sound subjective, but uh, this just implies that uh, the applicant has an, has an important role to play with regards to how the reviewers uh, respond to the application, because the, uh, the review that the reviewers uh, will give will depend on, uh, rather will, will be determined or be driven by the quality of the presentation that uh, the presenter or the applicant gives, which is why I was saying um, uh, the, the quality of the presentation or the, uh, the aspect of a good presentation is very, very crucial in determining how the outcome of the uh, grant application will be. There's also an aspect of uh, scientific merits of uh, the proposed uh, project. So like I said, again, initially, I said um, uh, good grantsmanship skills are not necessarily a substitute for good science. So there's also an aspect of uh, um, scientific merit as well as a technical merit that the applicant is supposed to uh, put into consideration as they present their work. So a uh, good grantsmanship, which is uh, the last component of uh, writing an application. So it's important that the applicant uh, knows and understands what it is that they have to do, how to do what it is that they want to do, when to do that which they want to do, as well as what to do when things do not go as planned. Uh, so the, uh, the applicant is supposed to have opportunities in case um, they have to, uh, for example, rebut the, um, the decision of uh, the, the reviewer in case uh, an opportunity is allowed, or if at all they have to apply to a different agency, or if at all they can apply to the same agency except in a different sub-institute. So those are the possible alternatives that uh, the applicant can think of. And then uh, it's also important that uh, the applicant is, uh, is willing to do whatever is needed, uh, whatever is necessary and whatever is required in order for the, um, in order for the uh, grants to be granted to them or the grant to be awarded to them. Because um, obviously the granting process takes uh, a very long time, uh, not definitely not a minimum of nine months, but usually over a long period of time, um, close to a year or so. So it's uh, important that the 
applicant understands that there's a lot of uh, work and patience and um, yeah, that they have to put in in order for them to eventually get the grant. So um, yes, after applying for the grant, the um, applicants uh, have to submit the application. So they uh, submit the application to the funding agency. So uh, it's important that they track to uh, verify that the, um, the grant has been uh, received and then to confirm that the assembled documents has, I mean, correctly reflects the applicant submission. So uh, what this means, especially in the aspect of um, uh, submitting, especially online, where the yeah, online modalities, let's say via email or via the funding agency's website, it's important that the uh, individual or the applicant ensures that the uh, documents and the uh, particular details that the, the applicant uh, submits or hands in are the correct ones. Yes. And then um, after the whole process of applying, so after, uh, at this point, the applicant has already made their plan. They've already sought out uh, information, preliminary information uh, with regards to how they can go about the applying and the relevance of their proposed uh, research uh, or proposed projects. And then they've already done the application, they've prepared the application and they've already submitted it. Now it's in the hands of the reviewers. So um, the reviewers here have uh, quite a number of roles to play with regards to um, um, the possible outcome of the, uh, the grant application. So uh, here I outlined a number of uh, roles that the, um, that the review board normally uh, has. So uh, the first one is evaluation of the scientific and technical merit of the project proposal, uh, whether it's, whether the uh, projects, or rather, yeah, whether the um, project that has been proposed has sound science, uh, reasonable science, feasible science or not, as well as the technicalities and the technicalities with regards to the, um, the issues of presentation and uh, following rules, are they uh, of merit or uh, demerit? And then um, we also talked about the significance at some point, significance and uh, innovation. The project proposal, the project that is being proposed by the applicant should be significant, should uh, add value to the body of knowledge that is uh, currently or at the time uh, is known, and uh, innovation is supposed to be um, a level of novelty to um, the um, um, yes to the project proposal that the individual is uh, proposing to um, have funded. And then uh, there's also an aspect of uh, the applicant's compliance with uh, physical and uh, administrative procedures. So here we may be talking about uh, things such as uh, instructions and um, uh, requirements that were established initially by the uh, funding agency recognizing allowable and non-allowable costs and expenses of the grant application, responsiveness to a uh, funding opportunity announcement. So um, I said initially that the funding opportunity announcement is the um, announcement that is given to, um, to inform uh, individuals or inform um, interested individuals uh, about the availability of grants uh, by the uh, grants um, uh, awarding agencies or awarding uh, institutions. And then there's also the aspect of uh, uh, the, um, the review board assessing or evaluating the feasibility and um, yeah, the feasibility of the experimental design. Yes, um, and then uh, the last step in uh, the process of uh, awarding grants is uh, the pre award and award process. So uh, at this point, the review board and other relevant uh, management, yeah, other relevant um, grant management officers have, uh, um, have decided which individuals have uh, met the criteria for receiving the grant. So uh, the final administrative uh, reviews are conducted at this point and the decision is reached. And um, after this, uh, a notice of awards, uh, notice of award documents are sent to successful applicants. And um, in most cases, applicants who are not successful are also informed of uh, the fact that they were not successful with the applications. Okay, so, um, uh, after, um, um, or rather during the process of uh, applying for a grant, it is important that uh, the applicant also has in their mind the possible determinants of grant funding success, as well as the possible uh, determinants of uh, grant funding failure. So these are just uh, basically the merits and the demerits of, um, a, of, a, of a, a grant application. So um, when you talk about the uh, possible determinants of grant uh, funding success, we are talking about aspects or elements 
that the applicant should pay attention to that that may increase the likelihood that uh, this client i mean this um this uh applicant will receive um and yeah will be awarded the grant that they are applying for so the aspects of uh, scientific merit so uh, it's important that the applicant avoids uh, personal biases and user and usage of emotion so under um avoiding personal biases so there's a uh, there's a chance that the applicants may may want to uh not that science is bad but they may want to uh overly use science in such a manner that other members of the review board who are not um who are not very acquainted with the details of uh, the science may uh, not find uh, the may not find the point that the uh, the applicant is trying to put across so it's important that uh, the that the applicants uh, avoid personal biases by having the review board or the audience the audience at the back of their mind and um, the influence that the um, the presentation with regards to the uh, the jargon the abbreviations as well as the acronyms may have on the um, level of understanding that the review board members may have and then apart from this um there's also an aspect of our uh, program consideration what are the needs of the funding agency and then what uh, how does the project proposal uh, fit with the with the agency's mission so this is uh, just a recurring theme that I've been talking about um, um, across the um, across the presentation. So the needs of the funding agency are very very important. So uh, if we go back to the rule that uh, we had uh, at the beginning of the presentation, it is important that the applicant uh, that the applicant looks at the application process from the perspective of the reviewer, from the, of the reviewer board as well as the um, the funding agency because it is because of uh, yeah it is from the perspective of the needs. The missions, the visions, the objectives, and the goals of the funding agency that the applicant should make the application. And then another important thing is also the aspect of availability of funds. If at all, um, and this is usually in the case of uh, uh, where the applicant makes um, the application without um, a prior um, FOA that has been uh, released. So an FOA, like I said, is uh, the um, uh, the um, the, the funding opportunity announcement. So without a funding opportunity announcement that has been released, find that uh, there's still an open window for individuals to apply, regardless of uh, whether there is an announcement that has been made or not made. So in this case, it is um yeah one uh, a determinant can be availability of funds that have been allocated to uh, giving out as grants at that time. So depending on whether funds have been allocated to giving out grants available or not. Uh, this would determine the outcome of uh, an individual's, sorry, an individual's um, uh, grant funding uh, application. And then um, we'll, uh, there's also um, possible determinants of uh, uh, grant funding failure. So these are the demerits uh, um, factors or elements that increase the likelihood of an individual not receiving a, a grant award from the granting agency. So um, these include uh, a lack of project ownership. Like I said initially about uh, the individual's understanding of their projects. So they should be able to have an understanding of what it is they're doing and what it is they're uh, they proposing and why the, pro uh, why the project proposal should be funded um, in, in favor, I mean, against the favor of um, the other applicants. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very important. And then, um, the other the other determinants could be a lack of understanding of the methodologies that uh, that should be applied by the uh, by the by the applicants during the process of uh, executing the um, yes executing uh, the project proposal as they've uh, outlined it and then there's also an aspect of lack of vision as well as uh, clear career planning so uh, the um, it's important that the applicant has um, has a foresight ahead of the reviewers. With regards to um, what they think the um, the impact of the project proposal will be, what the results may um, be, and how it's going to influence the current understanding of that uh, field, as well as the the impact that it will have, uh, where yeah, where the the application of the results are, are concerned, and then there's also a lack of uh, appropriate mentorship and collaboration. So um, working in isolation is uh, very much discouraged in this respect because um, it is important for uh, the applicants to have uh, a, a great resource of uh, information, especially with regards to uh, the funding agencies and uh, the processes, uh, the processes and the steps that they need to take 
for them to increase the likelihood of uh, having a positive outcome once they make the uh, funding um, the funding application. Then uh, last but not the least, um, these are my conclusions. So in conclusion, good grantsmanship is a cardinal determinant of uh, the grant application outcome. However, good grantsmanship is not a substitute for good science. And good grantsmanship is a skill that is developed with time, practice, and mentorship. Uh, thank you very much. This marks the end of my presentation. Uh, I'd like to um, welcome contributions. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Imano, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, so detailed, uh, on point. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, about uh, uh, grantmanship. Uh, so at this point, we're going to invite uh, any questions or any contributions from uh, the panelists. If there's any contribution or, or question, please feel free to do that. Yes, Rachel. Um, Imano, you talked of, okay, uh, talked of us not writing the, the grant application ourselves. I don't know if I didn't get the point or what, but I'm asking, what, what, how do you suggest who's supposed to write the, the grant? Mm -hmm. Are there any, any routes, what? Okay, I'm um, sorry, I wasn't able to get your question. Is it possible for you maybe to type it out? All right, sure. Uh, Rachel, if possible, maybe you can uh, you can text your question in case you are having challenge. In case you're having challenge with uh, network. Yes, please, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I want to, to thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I just have a little, a little question. You know, what I know is that when you want to apply for a grant, usually since for a project, you want, uh, you want to, uh, to give, uh, the, like, give an outline of the cost, like what the, what the project will, the expenditure that you, uh, that you need for the, for the, for the project. So I don't know if there's any tip on how to do that, like a, a guide on how to uh, to draw your your funding scheme for the for the project so that you are so that you should be kind of effective so that you can easily have the grant and the desired amount you want to carry out your project. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much on that. Um, well, I, I'm not exactly sure if there's a, a specific outline or a sketch that I can give for uh, uh, the budget, because uh, I think it may be, there's a great level that it may be determined by the, for example, the, the, uh, the individual's study design, as well as uh, uh, components that they will engage. If, for example, there will be like animal experiments that they will need for their research uh, project and all such things. So I think, um, we need to show the actual structure of um, the budget, but that's a very, very uh, important or rather cardinal element that I think I did not mention. But yeah, I'm not exactly sure. But I think if there's anyone who knows how we can go about sketching a, um, a budget for that, uh, you can kindly highlight us or enlighten us with that. Okay, I, I, I guess there's no one who's quite familiar with that. So in case someone comes across that, you can just share in the WhatsApp group uh, with everyone. Any other question or contribution? Um, yes, I have a question on the on the process of application. I didn't really get your explanation. Um, who are we applying the grant to? Is it that we apply to the reviewers? then like the reviewers check it out then they'll pass on the information to the people who are going to grant you the money or it's the actual reviewers who are going to uh find your projects i didn't get the explanation all right uh thank you so concerning that um the review um yeah, so the, the review process actually happens in like two stages in two steps 
So there's a, a first step in our reviewing, and then there's a second step that's uh, happens in reviewing. So there's a reviewing from, you know, from uh, my understanding, there's a review that is done on uh, to determine the scientific and technical, I mean, uh, the scientific uh, uh, credibility or the scientific merit of uh, your application. And then there's another review that is done uh, to uh, ascertain the credibility of uh, the technicality as well as the, um, the financial soundness of uh, your application. So uh, the the reviewers in this case are affiliated with the yeah they're affiliated with the funding agency. They can be external individuals or they can be individuals working directly with the funding agency. But uh, all these processes occur within the same uh, funding agency, except uh, the individuals who are reviewing can either be internal individuals or they can be external individuals that are just uh, affiliated with the um, funding institution. Thank you. So can you is it clear? Yes, it's very clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we're very happy to see Dr. Kabulo in our midst. Uh, you're welcome, Dr. Kabulo. Thank you so much, Darwin. I'm sorry I joined late. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. It's all right. Uh, we understand. OK, uh, I don't know if there's any question. Rachel, you had a question. I don't know if your network is uh, stable now. You can ask your question or you can possibly text uh, whichever is going to work best for you. Okay, so I was saying um, it was alluded to say it's it's not advisable for the person that's applying for the grant to actually write the grant themselves. So I wanted to ask, I don't know if it was explained or I just didn't get it. Who then is supposed to write the grant application? Like, are there some designated people or what? Oh, okay. I um, I think my statement was actually that um, in applying for the grant, it's important that the individual who is making the application uh, makes the application from the perspective of the needs, mm -hmm. missions, visions, objectives, and goals of uh, the granting agency. Not really that uh, someone else has to write the application mm -hmm. for them, but uh, when addressing the, the issue of the interests, the applicant should not be biased, especially with regards to the science that they are presenting to the uh, funding agency. But they should have at the back of their minds the interests, as well as the, the missions and the, yeah, the goals and the objectives that, um, yeah, that are enshrined in the, um, in the funding agency, specifically the sub-institute of the, of the funding agency. So, but uh, the applicant himself can write the application such that uh, in writing, they should be considerate of the, uh, the, the visions and the missions and the interests of the funding agency. I don't know if it's clear. Yes, thank you. Welcome. All right, is there any other question or contribution? Lorraine, we are happy to see you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, this was a great presentation. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank, thank you, Lauren. Okay, so uh, if there's nothing else, if there's no question or contribution, uh, please, we're going to end the uh, presentation here and hope to see you again uh, um, in the next session that we're going to have uh, next Saturday. Uh, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you.